Shalom, family. Shalom, Ms. Parker. This is your host, Brian Anthony. Binya with Beyond Babbitt reporting for duty. Your host, Brian Anthony. Binya with Beyond Babbitt reporting for duty. Reporting to you live from behind enemy lines. Reporting to you live from the United States of Israel. <sighs> All right. Well, guys, as the, as the uh, secular world continues to fall apart, um, I'm seeing all type of insiders pointing to different things collapsing and even um, World War Three trade on several fronts beginning to happen now. It's excellent. We rejoice over here. Remember, we don't get distressed. Remember what the word says, the holy apostles and angels and basically everybody holy rejoices over the fall, over the plagues that's coming over. Uh, uh, it's the day of vengeance. It's revenge because that worldly system is being taken down and a new one is being lifted up. Israel is being raised to the top to restore the nations, to heal, to heal the nations. So guys, we're going to be, um, we can call this, let's talk about marriage too. And it's uh, Mama Rebecca, Mama Rebecca. We're going to be pointing out some things because Abraham was the father of the faith and was an example in a lot of things that went forth again before the, Moses gave the law, before the Most High gave the law to Moses to give unto us. And uh, marriage is one of those things. And as we begin to build our new nation, we want to model it after the old paths instead of after Babylon. Uh, pretty much everybody who's going to be participating in the new marriage system that we're um, the, the new system, which is the old system that we're establishing, is coming out of Babylon, coming out of Egypt, coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah. So everything's already uh, up on its head. So um, we have to get it right because the nation is based off of the family. The church is based off of the family. So the family has to be first and foremost, first and foremost, a family of Yah, and then it's done the way Yah wants us to do it. Let's look at a few things because in our old mindset, in our Babylonian mind frame, in our Egyptian mind frame, in the mind frame of Sodom and Gomorrah, we looked at things differently and we'll come to different conclusions with the same data. Now with this data, uh, we send it through a filter of the, the word, washed it in the water of the word, and we have the, an understanding to where the veils have been taken off our eyes so we can do it like he prescribed us to do it, to where children are a blessing. Husbands and wives are a blessing. And we know that in these days, it talks about how the Lord is going to make a man more valuable than precious gold, more valuable than fine gold, because there's just not enough men adhering to this um, who are steadfast and unmovable. And, um, and then we see in Isaiah where seven women take hold to one man. It's not that he wouldn't sought them, they sought him. But there are still rules on governing all of this. So let's go to um, to Genesis chapter 24. We're going to look at Father Abraham. And um, now his wife's name was Sarah, or Sarai. But it came time for his son to get a wife. And uh, he was in the land. He was called out, remember? He was called out from amongst his family, from amongst the land he was from. To, to a place that most high was going to show him. And uh, so we're going to go over that and why he didn't want his son returning to the place that the most high called him out of. But at the same time, he wanted his son's wife to come from that place. One of the reasons he wanted his son's wife to come from that place because he knew how they were raised. He knew how the women there would be raised and what type of people they would be. Um, but at the same time, he was called out and he wanted to inherit the land that the Most High had already given him. And that's why I'm feeling so blessed in the spirit right now. Um, those who are who, who are following the Most High, Yah, who have followed him and his word, even up until now, there is a blessing in store. A lot of things pronounced in the spirit world. It's going to play out in the physical. We're going to be blessed in this hour. We're going to receive so much. It's like the cup is going to run over. He's opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out a 
blessing that we don't have room enough to receive it all while the rest of the world is reeling and those who um, haven't been faithful are reeling and rocking and committing suicide and thinking about woe is me, woe is me, we rejoice uh, in righteousness and gladness and blessing. So let's go ahead and start over here. Uh, Genesis 24, and let's start at verse 1, and it says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord, or, or Yahuwah, had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham was blessed in all things because he was obedient. He was told to come out, and he came out. He didn't try to, you know, convince everybody and their mama. And his decision was not predicated on if they was going to do it or not. If they, had, if they had said, no, we ain't going nowhere, guess what? Abraham still would have come out. So that's why he was blessed in all things. Now, blessed means well spoken of but if the most high speak well of you he gonna take care of you he doing things for you the things that can't be explained uh, type of blessing signs and wonders type of blessing okay and he's abraham is not surprised by this because he know who promised it to him was faithful and he just had to be faithful in keeping his end of the bargain to receive those things which were promised and as to all of us the same is in effect so it says Abraham and the and Yahuwah had blessed Abraham in all things. Verse 2. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant, because you know at this time Abraham didn't have any children of his own. He did, however, have 318 servants born in his own house, trained. And uh at the time after his um, wife's death, it said he had wives and concubines. So we don't know if this was the point where he had wives or concubines, but we know he didn't have um, a son yet. Okay, and it says, I'm sorry, not a son. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm all off. I'm thinking about Hagar and. and no, the, basically he had already, had, Isaac has grown. He's he's going to get his, um, but his eldest servant was going to do the bidding, was going to go. Now, this would have been his heir before he had Ishmael and before he had Isaac, this eldest servant, which trusted servant, who was a good servant, you know, followed Abraham. And so Abraham gave him control of all of his things. You know, Abraham was blessed. And at one spot, it said he was very rich. And so his servant was the one taking care of all, all of this. Abraham could trust him, knew that he wouldn't be stealing and having wild parties and all this other stuff. Um, this is how Israel should be. The people who you have on your land, they should be trustworthy. They should be, you should love your brother as yourself, but your brother should treat you as himself. You see what I'm saying? Your things are his things. You know what I'm saying? If you're not going to tear your stuff up, why are you going to tear your brother's stuff up? Yeah, so it goes a lot deeper. But so this is uh, he, he wanted a son. I mean, he wanted a wife for his son, who at this time I believe was something, something like forty years old, and still a virgin. This, this is going to be like the hundred and forty-four thousand. Forty years old and still a virgin, not not having a wife. Still learning, you know, happy, content. He was a good son. Uh, you don't hear any problems coming out of Isaac. And so Abraham wanted him a good wife. You don't want to attach a good son to a bad wife and give him the seed will be, oh man, it, it'll cause trouble. You know, Like Esau ended up causing trouble marrying the women from that land. Um, it troubled his parents. Okay, so, um, and Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had. Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, swear by Yahuwah, the Elohim of heaven, and the Elohim of earth. So he's the God of heaven and the God of earth. That thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. So 
he left, he was called out of a land, called to another land that's going to become his land by faith, by promise. But the women of this land, this new land, are no good. One reason is because they serve other gods. Second reason is because they may be um, um, unruly. You know, these might not be the meek women. These might not be the... In other words, they just wasn't... He, he, he forbid, don't marry a woman from here because they're not going to have the right teaching, the right understanding, the right attitude, the right actions. They worship other Elohims. They're not of my kindred. A number of reasons. Um, and these are things that we should consider today. Now, they, the, the, the women of today, if they're going to be with a, a godly man, a, a Israelite, they have to submit to the God of Israel. They have to submit to the Bible. And they can't be trying to rule over the man because the man is supposed to rule over the mom, a woman since Genesis. So, uh, but Babylon would have that reversed. And we're going to show you how because right now a lot of men are um, afraid because you give it the wrong woman. A woman can destroy a man, especially if he messes around and has, has a child or children by her. She can destroy a man, mess up the rest of his life pretty much. Um, so so man is really cautious these days and he's looking for that one. The standards are high. On the list, you know, she has to have this, 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 this. It's a big checklist. And if you miss any of those, he's not going to marry you. He might want to date you. He might want to have relations. But no, you, you're, you're too much of a threat. You're too much of a danger to endanger the things that he has going or the life he sees for himself. But in Israel, there was a way out. Um, you can have a woman uh, who didn't meet all the qualifications on the checklist. But then again, you knew that she could be a concubine or a wife, but you knew that there, you, you still had an opportunity um, to find and marry that, that wife that you were looking for because Israel, you're able to have more than one. So it was good for those women who didn't have the highest of standards or whatever they were lacking in because they could still be chosen, um, whatever that agreement may be. And uh, he can still have his trophy wife that he finds that he's been looking for, his dream wife, at the same time. Okay. Verse 4. But thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? So he was asking, did you want me to take your son back? If she won't come here, did you want me to take him there? And so the instructions are clear from Abraham. And that's what we have to do, guys. We have to make our instructions clear. He made it clear that first, don't pick a woman from this land for my son. Pick a woman from that land. And now let's see what he says about Isaac going back to that land. Verse 6. And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Is this... Um, saying unto me, Thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. So you take a wife from there, but don't take my son there. Don't take a wife from here. Bring a wife from there. So the instructions are clear to the servant. Okay? And, he's, and, he, and, and Abraham has faith. So maybe he's already prayed about it, or maybe the Lord has already spoke to him about it, that the Lord is going to send an angel before his servant to um, help this be accomplished. We need to pray like that too as well, guys. We need to have faith as well. And um, it's more we, we, as men, we have to do more doing. See, notice Abraham did not tell his servant, I'm going to pray for the Lord to send my son a wife. He would have just been waiting, wouldn't he? 
I was she, she was never gonna get away from my dad. That's not how it worked. You had to go send for her, go get her, go talk to her. It's not you know. For, so for young men, the advice you got in the Christian church, you know, just wait. The Lord gonna send you a wife. No, you have to find a wife. She has to be praying for a man to come uh, be sent to her. It's not for the male. You have to get out there and work. Get your hustle on. Okay. Verse 8. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. So he's saying, don't take my son there again. If, if she won't come, you clear from the oath. You know what I'm saying? Because he had already said the angel going to um, produce. Don't take my son there. Don't pick a wife from here. So the, the instructions are clear. Go there and get her. If she don't come, then you clear from this. Don't worry about it. But don't take my son there. Verse 9. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand and he arose and went to mesopotamia unto the city of nahor and he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening even the time that women go out to draw water so that's one of the um, gender roles and this was one of the work that the women did. They went out and drew water. And there was a certain time of the day that they did that. Verse 12, and he said, O Lord, O Yahuwah, Elohim of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good, good speed this day. So he said, please don't let it take all day. Hurry. This is how we can pray. This is how we can speak to the Lord, guys. And notice, we're going, to, we're going to notice the betrothal period, how long that is, how much time it is from their meet until the time they're married and everything like that. It doesn't take long like Babylon, you know, made it seem like you have to date for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And, you know, you know uh, there are rules in place in this book. That, 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 and this is before, what Abraham is doing is before, like I said, before Moses got the law and gave it to us. But in their contract, they're letting it know up front. There's no beating around the bush, you know. So we'll get there. <clears throat> Verse 12. And he said, o, o Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city Come out to draw water, and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed, thou hast appointed, for thy servant Isaac. And thereby, see, God appointed her. But the servant still had to go get her, had to go fetch. She wasn't coming. He had to go get her. He had to do a little work. Thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out. Rebekah came out who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. So you know how big it must have been uh, if she put it on the shoulder. It wasn't a big basin to where you can water 10 camels with it. Okay, So it's, it's one that you can carry, that her arms were long enough, you put it on your shoulder, they can, she can hold it. It wasn't heavy enough that it's going to knock her over. It was, it was pretty big because it had to go on the shoulder, but it's not enough to, to water this guy and his 10 camels. Remember, the ham camels have the humps on their backs. They can sit there and drink, 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 drink to fit until they're full. And then they won't have to drink for a long time. 
So this is um, this is not enough to, to water him and the camels. All right. Verse 16. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. That's the first thing. The well, second thing. You see, she was working. She was out working. She wasn't um, waiting for somebody to wait on, up on her hand and foot. She didn't think she was too good to be out working. She was actually sweating, carrying water. And um, she was pretty. She was nice looking. Said, very fair. The damsel was very fair to look upon. A virgin. That's something else she had going for. That's respectable. You know, she was under her dad's roof. Neither had any man known her. That's just reiterating the fact that, hey, she's a good, look how she's raised. Instead of being raised like women from that other place, that's why probably why Abraham said, no, I don't get one of these women. It's going to be hell on my son. It's going to be hell on the family. Then she's going to split and put him on child support. And uh, so we see how Rebecca, Mama Rebecca was already raised, right? Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. So she has hospitality because she's, of course, she said yes. Let's read that, verse 18. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher and upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. She was sweet. She was nice. She wasn't bitter. She wasn't, you making me work harder. I ain't got time for this. Or I didn't come. I'm, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I just got to do. No. She didn't know this guy. He was a stranger. Right? She gave him the drink. Said, oh, drink. Here, I'm going to feed your camels too. So, you know, like I said, that thing wasn't big enough to feed all them darn camels. She had to go back and forth a few times. This is extra work. She She's uh, um, tending to her father's flock, her father's sheep, and uh, drawing water and all this whole stuff. And John interrupted, but it, did, it, it didn't seem like a burden to her. She was being neighborly. So um, that's a blessing. Good attitude. Pleasant to look at. Not afraid to get her hands dirty. Not afraid to work. These are all good qualities. These are all good signs. Plus, the Lord led him there to the house of his of his master. His master had already prayed for him, said the angel was going to be there. It's quick. Boom. He's like, man, this the one. Remember then also what he had prayed for, and this is following right along that. Um, boom. It's done. I haven't found him. We can go. Just that, just that quick. It didn't take no three, six months, 12 months, 12 years. You know, 15 years, got to live together first. Didn't take all that, did he? So he knew what he was looking for. He found quality immediately. Okay, the Most High led him there. The angel led him there. And then he's going to make the betrothal. He's going to make the agreement, make the arrangement, put forth what, what we're looking for. Here's the deal. You know, it's on the table. Take it or leave it. No beating around the bush, no, no, you know. No trying out the merchandise first, testing, test driving, and all that other stuff. The rules that govern all of this. Okay. Verse 20. And she hastened and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw the water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Shoot, you see, she worth something. See, and that's another difference between Babylon and Israel. Like, in Israel, the wedding process they have a man, you know, usually the dad, a father, a father figure, or some type of priest, a pastor, somebody, an uncle, a granddad. Somebody give the bride away. They give her away. Just give her away. Like she's worthless. Like she's worth nothing. Right? In, in Israel, we don't give her away like that. She's worth something. She's somebody that's poured into her a lot of love, a lot of teaching. Uh, she has understanding. She's 
Look how she's raised. Look at the things she's doing. Somebody had to teach her all of that. So there's a dowry involved. And they ain't just giving her away. It's not a burden to get rid of her. It might be, you know, losing some help by getting rid of this daughter. Verse 21. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets of her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. Now, this is not tricking here, guys. This is a dowry. So there is no, in Israel, there is no wedding ring per se. But he's giving her bracelets and earrings that's worth something. And he's going to give the family some food and some stuff. He got gifts for them. Dowry. We don't know if there was ever a price set, but he, these are gold items. Heavy. So it's worth something. You know, hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars is what this is worth. We don't know. But they sent her. I mean, that's basically the deal. Uh, we don't know if they wrote out a contract, but usually uh, for a wife, there is a written contract. And usually for a concubine, there isn't. But um, they're both lifelong things. Okay. Verse 23. And said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said, Moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. Okay. Notice this man is not necessarily an Israelite, but he still served the God of Abraham. Hmm? So that's another nation that's joined unto us. Just an example of that. Verse 27. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way. See, he's in the way. The Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren, and the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah, had a brother and his name was Laban and Laban ran out unto the man unto the well and it came to pass when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands and when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister saying thus spake the man unto me that he came unto the man and behold he stood by the camels at the well and he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house. This is our brother. He had manners as well. This guy's a stranger. They never met him before. And I don't think he... He did mention Abraham, but regardless, they didn't already prepare the house and prepare the spot in the barn. And hospitality. Hospitality, love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy brother as thyself. You know, that's one of the greatest. That's the second greatest of all the commandments. And that's why Abraham sent his servant here. Um, I'm going to read a little more. We'll chalk it off, cut it off for now. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Wherefore, standest thou uh, without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. And the man came into the house, and he ungirdled his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him. So that lets you know that Rebecca probably watered them as well when she gave the camels water. She gave the men that were riding those camels water, and she gave the servant water. So that's a blessing. That's how we should raise our daughters to be. It's the reason why Abraham um, sent his servant to that land to get the daughter and didn't want his son to go there because they were called out. And um, there was a dowry with them. The daughter is not just given away. Uh, the daughter is worth a price. So these are things we should be um, thinking of as we build Israel, as Israel is built. And uh, as we are going into these last days, as the, the 
the, the world is collapsing. There are going to be a lot of single women that need covering. And this is what we look for. There are going to be a lot of men. We, we don't have, need to be um, squeamish anymore. They're on the brakes waiting for the one. The one. You know, all 7 billion, 8 billion people on the earth. You know, you're looking for that one. And you, you got the brakes on all the rest of them. And uh, you can be being useful and learning and, 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 and just don't overdo it. Because... Whatever you take is for life. The Lord hate divorce. Anyway, guys, this has been another Let's Talk About Marriage. Mama Rebecca. And uh, we may get back to this series. There's a lot. It's going to be a lot as we finish up the King Moses, finish up the King Moses series about family because the nation is built off of family. But Till the next time, love y'all, peace and blessings. Shalom, shalom. This has been your host, Brian Anthony Binya, report, reporting to you from the United States of Israel. Over and out. Peace and blessings. Love y'all. Thank you.